Matthew 14 is where we're going to be this morning. I'd like to thank everyone for being here on this Sunday morning. I hope everyone is doing well. But before I get into my scripture, I'd like to thank Pastor Kay for giving me the opportunity to be allowed to stand up here in this pulpit. Many men have come through this pulpit and done what I can't do. Many people have come through this pulpit and preached the word, but I feel honored that Pastor Kay has given me the opportunity to stand up here. Now, as you're turning to Matthew chapter 14, I'd like to give you a little bit of an introduction into my lesson this morning. A few days ago in the paper, and some of you might even actually read it, it said that Presbyterian churches all over the United States of America would now allow and start allowing gay marriages in their churches, but not only in their churches, in their church services. And their reason for doing this when asked why was society is changing, therefore we need to change with it. If I may stop for just a few moments and say, I'm glad that we have a pastor that doesn't change for society. I'm glad that we have a pastor that stands on his foundation, his word, and he backs up this church and preaches out of the King James Bible each and every Sunday morning, each and every Wednesday evening. And I'm glad that he doesn't change for society. It is not the church's responsibility to move and change for society. Society's going to change, but we need to stand our ground and back up the church. Jesus said in John 15, 19, If you were of the world, the world would have loved his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. The U.S. is in such a bad spot today because we as a country have turned our back on God. We are siding with countries that we shouldn't be siding with and not supporting and siding the ones that we should be siding with. So the United States is in such a bad situation today. Our leaders of this great country have forgotten that it was founded on two things, God and religion. It wasn't founded on the things that they're saying it was founded on today. And I'm glad because our president is a messed up man. Amen to that. Now you might be asking why I've chose this as my introduction, and that's a great question, and I'm going to answer it with the title of my lesson, Even in the Storm, God is With Us. Even though the U.S. is in a bad spot today, God still has His hand on His people. This morning, for just a few minutes, I would like to talk about faith. We're going to look at Peter's faith as he was walking on the water with Jesus. And just this relates to my intro, because just as Peter's faith was small, so is the United States today. So now we're going to get into our text. And it says in verse 24, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it, bid, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased, and then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. So in our text we have Peter and the other disciples on a ship after Jesus had sent them off. In the, text, in the verses before our text, Jesus and his disciples have just finished talking to a multitude. Jesus puts them on a boat, sends them off, and Jesus goes on a mountaintop to pray. But while they were on the water in the boat, a storm blows in, and the winds be became boisterous, and the waves started hitting the side of the boat, and the disciples started to have a troubled spirit. But if I may say, a troubled spirit doesn't last long when the Lord is near. The disciples were in the boat, they looked at each other, and they saw this figure off in the ocean. They looked at each other and said, this couldn't be anything else but a spirit. We're in the middle of the ocean. There's nothing else out here but me, you, and this boat. That has to be a spirit. But in verse 27, while the storm is still raging, the Lord says to them, be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. It also says in Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So even Isaiah tells us in his book that the Lord tells us not to fear. So there's no need to fear. 
Peter says, Lord, if that really is you, allow me to walk on the water with you. Peter is a good example of the citizens of the United States today. They have to have something that they can see, touch, or feel before they, before they will believe. Brother Jeremy, I know he goes out on uh, bus trips sometimes with Brother Noah, and they go to door to door, knocking on the door, asking people and telling them about the Lord. Some people might even look at them and say, where is the Lord? If I can't see Him, if I can't touch Him, if I can't feel Him, I'm not going to believe. But the Lord did not deny Peter's request to come walking on the water with him. And in the next verse, Peter's request was answered. The Lord said to him, Come. And as Peter began to step out of the boat and put his feet on the water, he began to walk on the water just as Jesus was doing. And he was looking straight at Jesus, and the winds was still raging. The storm was still blowing. The Lord did not stop it. The Christian, as we walk on the water with the Lord and our walk with the Lord, the waters are still going to be raging. The winds are still going to be blowing. But I thank God that I can go to Him in the times of trouble and the times of need when I need Him most. And He'll come and He'll pull us out of the water and help us. But as Peter was walking on the water, his faith began to grow dim. He began to lose sight of the Lord. So as he began to, he began to sink as his faith began to grow dim. He began to sink and sink, and he continued to sink. And in the very next verse, he cried out for the Lord, saying, Save me. So Peter was drowning in the water, looking at the Lord, saying, Lord, help me. Get me out of here. Don't let me drown. But in verse 31, my favorite verse from our text says, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Now you may be asking, why is this your favorite verse of the text? Well, it's not because of the Lord asking Peter where his faith was. It's that first section of the verse before that. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. Now, as Peter was drowning in the water, he's a good picture of us as we're drowning in the sins of this world. We were calling out for the Lord for, to help. Peter was calling out for the Lord to help him as he was falling and sinking in the water. And, and the Lord went down and reached farther down to Peter and you and me, farther than we could reach up to him, and pulled us out of the sins of this world and saved us. Now, as we are walking on our walk with the Lord, there's going to come troubles in our life. But those are the times that the Lord tells us to go to Him and run to Him. And He will pull us out of the sins of, that wor and of the world. But it doesn't say it took the Lord a while to get down to where Peter was. It doesn't say it took the Lord a while to come down and save us and pull us out of the sins of this world. And the, first, the second word of this verse says, immediately. It didn't take the Lord a while to stretch His big almighty hand and get down to where we were. It was immediately He stretched forth His hand and pulled us out of the sins of this world. So this morning, let's not have a faith as Peter's, but one following after the Lord. Even in the storm, God is with us. Thank you, Pastor Ken. Hallelujah. Anybody sinking today? <clears throat> Just say, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. And I don't care if you're lost, he'll save your soul. And if you're saved and you're just losing confidence or joy, is your peace disturbed? Listen, this church has been here 47 years, and we've been through every kind of temptation and trial the devil can throw on us. Now, he ain't let up, and he's not letting up now. But glory to God, Jesus save us. Amen. I got confidence in my Savior. Hallelujah. That he's going to save us from the drowning waters. I really believe that. 